unfurl them. Move it! If you're not using your balls, I can... We're not going down All right, quietly. you stupid brunks! I got them! Make me proud! Yes, sir! Give her all you got! I know I said. Faster, you louts! Well, as you wish! Lower your aim! Aye, aye, Captain! Keep your wits about you, men! Yes, sir! Nice. Lancaster told me that if I ever saw anyone but him behind his counter, he was being robbed. I assure you, I'm no robber, good sir. My name is Scallion. I'm Lancaster's assistant. What can I do for you today? You can tell me where your boss is. He, uh, had to step out momentarily. Look, Scanlan, Lancaster sent me to get his wood and I need to unload it. Where is he? Sir, surely you can understand that Lancaster is a man who has many dealings with many people. I'm in charge of the shop while he's out with some potential customers. Where did they go? Well, not that it's any of your business, but I haven't a clue where they went. A Spanish gentleman came into the shop and had some words with Lancaster and they left together. Spanish? Did you hear the man's name? Well, Lancaster said something like, You must be a tornado! Torado. Torado? No, Tornado. I'm, I'm pretty sure he called him Tornado. Shut up. How long ago was this? It's no need to be rude. 
And it was just now. I'm surprised you didn't bump into them in the street. I'll be back. Well, thanks for coming in. You filthy Spanish dandy piece of shit! Now then, Lancaster, we know all about your little alias, Lasso de la Vega, and we know what you've been up to. Selling weapons straight during the day, then selling defective weapons under your assumed name by night. Pretty shrewd business model, if you ask me. Ah, but you let your little vendetta against the Spaniards make you stupid. You've been selling far too many broken weapons to our captains lately. Go fuck yourself, you dago piece of shit! Go ahead and kill me! I'm not gonna beg in front of an inbred pig fucker like you! <laughs> kill you! You're the best weaponsmith in the Caribbean! No, what I'm going to do is blackmail you. I'll be taking a cut of your profits and free weapons for me and my men. Comprende? Fuck you! That's the spirit. Now, the boys here and I are going to beat the living shit out of you. Your defective weapons are responsible for the deaths of quite a few of His Majesty's soldiers. Plus, I just don't like you. Ah, watch his hands, boys! He's not much used to us with broken fingers. Hey, fuck off. We're busy. Hey, what did I say? You're late! But I've done my job without getting into any trouble. What the hell have you gotten yourself into? What do you mean? Oh, that back there. That was nothing. I bumped into that prick on accident, and before I could blink, it was dragging me down this alley. You know how irrational those Spanish dogs can be. Especially when you disguise yourself and sell them weapons that misfire and explode. Lasso de la Vega? <laughs> you could come up with a better alias. Oh, you heard all that then, huh? Well, surely you can't judge a man for making a little bit extra on the side. Thanks for saving my skin back there, by the way. I was after Torado, and Torado was after you. You're lucky you're on the ground, or I would have had to shoot through you. You're a true opportunist. It's one of the reasons I like you. Come and see me at my shop in a bit, and we'll get you outfitted with some proper weapons. I need to clean up, and then I'm going to burn these clothes. Those filthy Spaniards had their hands all over me. I'll come by later.
There's something I need to tell you. The location of the biggest chest of gold in the West Indies, I hope. Amber. She's over at the Pink Flamingo, and she's not coming back. I knew there was something wrong. She left? Without a word? That's what I'm saying, and I need her back. I'm likely to lose quite a bit of money without her. What's she doing there? It's a place for gambling, not for... That's what I would like you to find out for me. I'll make it worth your while if you get her to come back. I can't go there myself, it'll make me look weak. Calm down, will you? I'll go there and get her back. Amber, what are you doing here? Has Maria sent you again? She wants to know why you left without saying a word. You like it better here? Just leave me be, or I'll scream, Captain Raven. Gus, the owner of this place, he has men who'll protect me. Calm down. I'm just asking you a question. Look, I'm not Maria's property, and I want to take a chance here, with Gus. I understand, but Maria would have appreciated it if you would have said something before you just up and left. She would never have agreed to it. She would never have let me go. You know how she is. Mr. Gus Luddock will not allow any killing in his house. Hey, boys. Looks like this pirate over here wants a lesson. You sure you want to make trouble?
I am calm. You'll know when I get excited. <laughs> Seems like I need a new set of guards. Three of them and only one of you. Pathetic. I don't suppose you're looking for a job? No. I'm my own boss. <laughs> I suspected as much. I know who you are, Captain Raven. So, what was the reason for this commotion, if you weren't applying for a job? <clears throat> You're a businessman. You know the rules. You don't poach the competition's best horse and expect nothing to happen. Best horse? Oh, oh, this is about Amber. Sure, I should have known. Look, this is something more than business. I kind of took a liking to the girl. Don't talk to me about romance when I'm talking business. Look, I'm willing to pay reasonable compensation. Partially because I'm fond of the girl, but mainly because I know we all need to work together to make a profit. There's no money in bloodshed, especially in Bridgetown. I'll even pay more than she's worth, to show I meant no harm. What do you say? Sounds reasonable. I see we understand each other. Tell Maria my reasons, and assure her that she will be generously compensated. How about you show your generosity right now? Think about all the money you're saving, now that you don't have to pay the men I killed for their services. <laughs> I like your sense of humor. Pity you're not looking for a job. I told you, Gus would protect me. Yeah, seems you're worth something to him. But don't expect too much, Amber. Also. about Amber? Is she coming back? No, but Gus will compensate you for the money you'll lose. It's a good chunk of gold. Just like that? <sighs> so it was Gus who talked Amber into going over to his place. The fool fell in love with her. Hmm. Yes, what a fool he must be. He'll get tired of her soon.
Mr. Raven, you again? You're in a good mood today, Ash. I have some money for you. 10,000 reales. Four? For your services. We're sailing to Kumana to help Blackthorn sink the Spanish fleet there. What do you say? Not bad, not bad. Make it 12,000 reales and I'm your man. That's not going to happen. It's 10,000 reales, nothing more. It's up to you. Take it or leave it. Let me round up me men and we'll set sail. Guess you need your boat rip. Not to worry. Anything you need, you'll don't with pleasure.
been sailing these seas for many a year. Spending me days bread and terror and fear. But now I'm returning with gold and great store. It's time to retire and grab me a whore and the no Anything you need, you'll find it here. Don't bet on it. We've played.
Ready for the journey? Just about. And how was the hunt? Easy enough. No survivors, I assume? No, I need not know that. In fact, I just need to hear that you are ready to continue on. The sooner the better. You will need to become acquainted with yet another man, Christopher. Another accident? Heavens, no. No, this man's position is somewhat high. Too high for him to fall without excessive scrutiny. Sounds like the perfect time for a fall, if you ask me. There would be far too much noise, and his position makes him more useful as an ally than a corpse. A bribe, then? Hmm, no. No, he makes far too much coin to risk his standing by taking a bribe. That much is certain. The man in question is a Monsieur Touché, the governor's personal secretary. He is very comfortable where he is, and he doesn't believe any changes are necessary. And Kensington still got to him? Actually, he did not. And therein lies our opportunity. He can be quite useful in undermining Kensington, if he can be persuaded to do so. It will be up to me to persuade him personally, but I am counting on you to make him more receptive to my invitation. All right, but if he won't take a bribe and you don't want him killed... Yes, but like any man comfortable in his position, he has certain uh, vices, certain habits that we may exploit. For example, he has been a regular guest at a rather well-known, albeit discreet, establishment in Bridgetown. An establishment which, I'm told, you happen to know as well, full of... Sinners, young, fallen women. Everyone knows about Maria's. I know the place and the owner. I know you do, Christopher. Hence the plan. I hate to disappoint you, but he won't be the first one caught visiting the girls there. I'll bet his friends already know. Hell, they probably use Maria's girls themselves. Maybe it'll upset his wife, but I don't think it'll make him work with us. But that is the key, Christopher. You see, Mr. Touche's tastes demand a rather particular type of girl. Young, with cropped hair, and with a very... There is no other way to put it. Very flat chest. So? There are more details which I will spare you. Vile, filthy details. But they all add up to one inescapable conclusion. Mr. Touché seems to prefer men to women. Ah, uh, I see. Yes, indeed. And buggery is, as you know, a capital offence. Due to his standing, Mr. Touché would probably find himself beheaded rather than hanged. But I doubt he would enjoy either. He's managed to find male prostitutes before. But so far, he hasn't requested one at your friend's establishment. Yet. So, how do we catch him with one? I put my full trust in you, Christopher. With your mind, and your friendship with the woman who runs that business, I know you can arrange a compromising meeting for Mr. Touché. Then simply give him this letter. It informs him to come and see me so that everything might go away. God will still judge his sins, but the governor will not. I think it can be arranged. I had no doubt. May God's hand guide you, especially in that den of sin into which you will descend. I'm pretty sure I can handle that, but it's not going to be free. Ah, yes. I, I don't expect your friend will do this out of the goodness of her heart, will she? Fortunately, I know how to speak her language. I presume this will be enough to convince her. I'll do what I can.
first time I've hunted an old pervert. Christopher, come on in. Are these guards going to stop me every time I come in here? I can't be too careful, especially now. Those filthy Spaniards putting their stinking brown hands on me. Ugh. Hey, move aside. Christopher's the one who rescued me after you two idiots couldn't do your jobs. Remember? Useless bastards. There now. Plenty of room. Plenty of security. I wonder if you'd do me a favor. A favor? I just saved your life. Well now, that's debatable. Besides, I just need you to run down the street for me and visit a friend of mine. What do you say? Run down the street? Simplest thing in the world. A while back, I lent my rifle to a man named Pliny, a metal worker down the street. After all this Toronto business, I'd like to have it back here in the shop. If you'll grab it for me, I'll make it worth your while. A rifle? This is a weapon shop. There's a thousand rifles in here. I've killed more Spaniards with that rifle than any other, and I can't do without it. Those Spanish bastards could be lurking around every corner. This had better be worth it. I help you? I'm here to collect Lancaster's rifle. Lancaster's rifle? What's this about? Don't play dumb. Lancaster lent you a rifle. Now he wants it back. You've got all your facts mixed up. Lancaster owed me a debt. I fancy the rifle, so he gave it to me instead of paying in coin. Piss off!
Lancaster says he lent it to you. You wouldn't be trying to trick me, would you? I'd hate to have to come back here. Don't threaten me, boy. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Lancaster's a good man, but he forgets half of what he says and most of what he does. Go remind him he gave it to me to pay a debt. He'll remember. I'll ask him. I sure hope you aren't lying to me. I've got no reason to. Stop making threats and go talk to him. You'll see. So, where's my rifle? He says you gave it to him to pay off a debt. What? He what? That bastard, I'll bet his mother's half Spanish. Of all the sneaky, deceitful... Oh, wait. Wait, it's coming back to me now. That's right, I did give it to him. Bloody hell, Lancaster. I could have killed the man. Well, hey, I've had a lot on my mind lately. Wait, you didn't threaten him, did you? Oh, Christ, if you fucked this up. If I fucked it up? Scanlan, mind the shop. I've got to go speak with Pliny about trading back for my gun. Christopher Raven. 
Christopher. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise. We have no business to take care of. Could it be you've come for pleasure? Not for me. But I want to arrange something for a friend. Mm, how generous of you. Send him over. I'll be sure to take care of him. Does he want anything in particular? He's actually one of your regulars. I'll need you to find him something special for the next time he comes in. All right, Chris. What are we playing at? Who are we talking about, and why isn't he the one telling me all this? His name is Touche. He's the governor's secretary. Chris, this ends here. Being discreet is how I keep this business going, and I'm not going to... Come on, Maria. You know what he likes. I need you to give him the real thing. Not a girl made to look like one. And once he's done, I'd like to have a word with him. Are you insane? You think I'm going to let you blackmail a customer? I never even discuss my customers. Especially not one of his standing. And certainly not with you. Goodbye, Christopher. Would this convince you? What's in there, lead? Something heavier. Well, <laughs> it might help. No, it's impossible. My customers know that everything that happens here stays here. I can't afford to lose anyone's trust. And I especially can't afford to earn the wrath of someone like Touche. How do you even know him, anyway? Don't worry about that. And you're not going to lose anyone's trust, don't worry. Touche's going to end up making a powerful friend. He just doesn't know it yet. All I need is a little leverage to push him in the right direction. We're not talking about you, Chris, are we? All right, who is this friend? Deep pockets and exclusive information. Doesn't sound much like your usual crowd. His name is Avery. Not that you'd know him. He's hardly the kind who'd come visiting. Edward Avery. Mr. My Shit Stinketh Not. You know him? I know of him. Unless there's another Avery who's in close with every fat clergyman around the Caribbean. How did you two get together, anyway? There isn't a bishop's ass his nose hasn't touched. Most of them owe their office to him. Pious bastards. They call me Jezebel in their sermons and would gladly see my place burned. But if they knew how much their own bishops visit. That's right, Maria. He's very close with the clergy. The kind of man who can make every two-bit preacher on these islands shut up about your business for good. So you're saying he could help me out here? I'm saying that if you play this right, it won't be long before Touche's and nobody compared to Avery. And Avery will remember that you helped him. All right. I'll take the gamble. But just what you've asked for. He's only been getting girls here, made up to look like boys. I don't deal in boys. It's not worth the heat. Even Gus has stopped offering them over the Flamingo. And you know him. He'd bend over himself if you paid him enough. I can arrange the meeting for Touche, but I don't have the dish. I guess I don't need to ask if you know where to find one. <laughs> Legally, of course not. But the hawks are known to hunt their prey in a few spots. There is an alley by the church where chickens can be found, mostly at night, but you're bound to find some by day, too. By the church? Last place you'd look. Anyway, the sooner we get him over here, the better my girls will be able to doll him up. It takes time to make a man look as pretty as a girl. <laughs> I can think of a quick way. Careful, Chris. Some of these boys really like dangerous, mysterious men. They might get ideas about you. 
I'm not in the mood to joke, Maria. Who's joking? I'm just letting you know, Christopher. Fine. Get everything ready here. I'm off to the damn church. First time in a while, I'll wager. Don't worry. They're usually outside, 